Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be the designer handbags that I have sold and why. And I actually wrote down a list of all the handbags that I sold over the weekend and I was surprised to see that there are actually quite a few of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk through each brand of bag and why I sold it. I mean a lot of these bags I do love but they just weren't right for me. Before I jump into it though, there's one thing I did want to quickly address. I did get married recently. You might have seen if you follow me on Instagram or my blog, I have posted a couple pictures of my wedding dress and also just a little snap on my Instagram of what the venue looked like. So if you want to check that out, I will pop some links down below so you can have a little look. But I will be doing a wedding Q&A, so if you have any questions about wedding, the planning, anything like that, please drop them down in the comments below and I'll answer them all in this video that I have coming up. And for those of you who are wondering, yes, I will be sharing a wedding video with you all. We had a really lovely videographer there on the day. I'm just waiting to receive all of the footage and after that I'll cut something together to share with you guys, which I'm really excited about and I kind of can't wait to actually just relive all of those memories because it was just such a special and magical day. So I want to jump right into it and the first brand that I want to talk about is Celine and I adore Celine bags. I think they're absolutely beautiful and they're also aspirational as well and obviously quite expensive depending on the type of bag that you buy. I've owned three Celine bags and I've sold every single one of them. Unfortunately they just didn't work out for me. The first one that I got was the Celine Cabas Tote and this was in sort of like a lambskin leather. I'm going to insert photos of me styling the bag as well just so you can see and if I can find them I'll link all the bags down below as well. But so I bought this pre-loved. I bought it off Trade Me when I was back in New Zealand so I got it for a little bit of a steal and I just found that it was just such a soft tote bag. It didn't have very long straps. Straps on it were actually quite short so you could really only hold it in the nook of your arm which didn't really work for me, particularly when you're carrying so much stuff. And I was a little bit worried as well because the leather seemed really delicate and I didn't want to damage it. So it just didn't work out from that perspective. And I just didn't like the way that it looked when it was full either because it was just so soft and the leather was quite thin. You could see all the different little bits poking out and it just, to me, didn't look visually appealing. So. I decided it was best to pass it on. The second bag that I got from Celine was the Celine Trio and I have been lusting after this bag for the longest time and I actually purchased it when I was working at David Jones because we got a staff discount so it made a lot more sense for me to purchase it when I was working there and I got it in a periwinkle blue, the shade is actually called Lavender and it is just one of the most stunning colours ever. I really like the fact that it's got three pouches and that they're detachable, although honestly I never ever detached the pouches. I always just wore it as one bag and I like the fact that the strap was adjustable. But what I didn't like was that the bag is actually really delicate and not in the sense that the leather is super delicate because I didn't really have any issues with the leather. I did get some minor creasing but no scratches or anything like that. But it just broke really easily. I've heard stories of girls who have had the strap of the bag break off, who have had just holes in the actual pouch itself and all their belongings have fallen off. I've heard of girls finding that the snaps on the bag would just break away and the bag would just fly off. For me, it was actually one of the, um, it was the shoulder strap for me. Um, so I noticed one day when I was wearing it, I probably wore it a handful of times, like 10 times or so, that one of the little gold rivets or pops that you use to adjust the length of the strap had come off. And like I said, I barely used the bag. It was in perfect condition. And I took it to Celine and they basically said they could not do anything for me. And I got really upset because when you're spending so much money on a handbag, you kind of expect to at least get some sort of service and they're like, we can't help you here. And I would have been happy to pay for the repair as well. So they ended up directing me to a leather repair shop and I had to get the bag repaired there. And after that, I thought, you know, I'm not a millionaire, I don't really have the time or the money to run around repairing bags and I don't want to have to baby a handbag and so I decided that it just really wasn't the right bag for me. Maybe I'll get it in another colour at some other stage in life but it just wasn't right for me right then and there so I thought it was best to give it to another home. Um, obviously as I sold it, it was in an immaculate condition and the bag had been repaired to a much higher standard than when I purchased it, <laughs> brand new as well. But anyway, that just didn't work out for me. And then the third bag that I bought from Celine, I actually purchased from a girl that I know who's a blogger. She lives in Perth and she had purchased the Celine 
Cabas tote with gusset and I should have learnt my lesson the first time. This was actually I think a calfskin, like a grain, slightly grained calfskin if memory serves me correctly. It was much thicker leather, it had a lot more sturdiness to it although I could see that over time it probably would lose a bit of structure and become a lot more malleable and soft as well. But the issue was that this bag was enormous. So it had zippers down the side. And again, I'll show you guys photos and everything. But so the bag was sort of basically like a tote. And then zippers would expand the bag. So you could just fit so much in there. It was ridiculous. And again, this didn't have a long shoulder strap. So I couldn't put it over my shoulder. And holding a heavy bag like that in the crook of my arm or in my hand just really isn't practical for me. Particularly because I was living in Bondi at the time. I was getting the bus to work. Well, the bus and then the train to work so I wanted to have a bag that was hands-free so I ended up passing that one on as well it was a beautiful handbag but just because of that very reason I never used it and I really didn't think about whether or not it was going to be practical for my lifestyle when I bought it from her Next I want to talk about my Manso Gavriel bucket bag this is actually something I purchased last year as part of the five piece French wardrobe challenge which I'll link up here somewhere in case you guys don't know what that is but I mean, I remember when this bag first kind of launched onto the fashion scene and everybody went absolutely crazy for it. And I was like, oh yeah, it's nice, but I don't need to own it. But I had the opportunity to actually pre-order it and I figured, why not? So it was, I think, about six months that I had to wait from when I paid the deposit to when I actually received the bag. And I was so pleased with the bag when I purchased it. It was a really beautiful, stiff calf leather. I bought it in the black with the ballerine interior which I just think is one of the most stunning combinations I think it's really lovely um, the strap is a really nice length I'm five foot eight so it's at the perfect spot for me but what I didn't like about the bag was the tie which actually secures the top of the bag so people can't put their hand in so it's a leather tie but because it is such stiff leather it kind of means that you are actually damaging the leather every single time you tie it and you'll see a lot of wear and tear on that particular strap and I really didn't like that about the bag and the other thing that I noticed is that where it would sit on my hip it would actually concave in slightly and because we're saving to go away on our holiday and also with our wedding coming up I decided that I wanted to part with it then and I'm a little bit sad about it because it's one of the few bags that I had that could comfortably fit my DSLR camera so I could pop it in there and I wouldn't have to worry. So from that perspective I actually am really upset because it was a great handbag for lugging around my camera for if I was taking any blog photos but I just found that there are a few things about it that weren't exactly perfect and I am kind of fussy and I do look for very particular things when it comes to bags and yeah, I loved, I loved, loved, loved having that bag, but there were just a couple of little niggly things. So I decided to part with that one. And then I actually have owned quite a few bags from Alexander Wang. So I might start with the first bag that I ever purchased from Alexander Wang. And I think this was one of the first kind of more expensive handbags that I bought. I think maybe it was the second one I got in after I'd bought my PS11 satchel. And I got the Emile satchel in the black with the rose gold hardware and I got it in the large size in the pebbled leather and it was just like the most beautiful bag. I remember my mom loving it. She thought it was really stunning as well. I really like the geometric shape. I like the closure. I like the fact that it fits a lot in it and it's got that nice very structured base to the bag as well. But god that bag is so heavy. It is just ridiculously heavy. I think it weighs about three kilos on its own. Okay, maybe not three kilos, but it weighs a lot on its own if you get it in the large size. And for someone who has a bulging disc in their lower back, I've had a problem with my back since I was 14. Just didn't make any sense to have a bag that weighed that much before you even put anything in it. And I'm the type of person who does like to stuff their bags, particularly if I've got a big bag, I'll end up finding everything to put in there. I'll find a way to fill it up basically. But I just found that it was putting too much strain on my back, on my shoulders, on my neck, and I just had to sell it on and that was a really sad day because I really loved it but yeah really heavy I'm actually looking out for a small Emile in the blush pink color because I just think it's such a sweet style and I actually really like it in the smaller size I think it's so petite and just really cute then the second bag that I bought was the Marion bag and that's sort of like a shoulder bag it is quite small you can't really fit too much in there so it's probably more of like a 
running minor errands or if you're going out if you've got the black version. So I bought this in probably the most awful mint green colour and I hadn't realised, because I bought it pre-owned, I hadn't realised that there was quite a bit of marking to the leather and also there was some scratches to the hardware. I didn't do my research and I was really unhappy with the bag when it arrived. I took it to a dry cleaner who had a partnership with a leather shop and they dyed the bag black. And it actually looked pretty good, but there was some sort of marbling on the hardware from where the dye had leaked because they do tape it up and everything, but obviously you can't always expect it to come out 100% perfect. And that sort of annoyed me. And also I really hated the closure on that bag. It is just so fiddly. You kind of have to push it up. I don't, I, I don't know how to explain the motion, but it kind of hooks up and under, so it was just so fiddly to open, and I never ended up using it. I just had other bags that I prefer to use, and in the end, I decided to sell it. It just was not the right bag for me. If it had a different closure, though, it would probably be a completely different story. And then the final bag that I bought from Alexander Wang is actually one I wish I still had. So in terms of selling bags, this is probably one that I've got the most regret about. But I never used it. I think I used it once and I mostly just took blog photos with it. So it's the Devere bag. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it was a structured little satchel bag that you could hold in your hand like that and also had a strap. And mine was the one with the rabbit fur tassels on the side. So it was super cute. The tassels were really beautiful and puffy and soft and I loved the look of them. I bought it from the Outnet so I actually got it for a really, really reasonable price but the leather itself seemed really delicate, like it would scratch quite easily. And honestly, I mean, like I said, I do regret selling the bag, but you couldn't really fit a lot in there. And I was still very much in the phase of taking everything with me at this time. I always use large bags. I wasn't ready for a mini bag just yet. Now I completely am, I'm all over mini bags, but yeah, it just wasn't really right for my lifestyle then and I ended up selling it and now I'm on the hunt for a pre-loved one. So if you guys ever come across one, I did on the real real and then I didn't, I kind of waited a day too long and someone else snapped it up. So if you ever come across one, please let me know as I definitely want to pick that one up again and add it back into my collection. And then the last bag that I have sold, the designer handbag that I've sold, is the Clutch. And it is from YSL and it's the Y-Mail Clutch. And I purchased it a little bit over five years ago when I was in Vegas with my best friend Mary and we both bought the same bag actually. They had two of them in stock so we both bought matching ones. And it was patent leather with the gold kind of envelope style look on the front. Really, really beautiful, very simple. It just had a snap closure on the back and one little pocket, but you can really fit a lot in there. I mean, obviously it was an evening clutch, but I didn't ever take it out. Like I didn't want to take it clubbing because I didn't want to get it ruined. I think I probably spent, back then it was probably about $500, which when I think about it now, it's really not that much compared to other designer handbag and clutch prices. But it was a lot of money for me then and I just really didn't want anything bad to happen to this bag. So it was in pristine condition. I maybe used it twice. I think I wore it for New Year's Eve once when I went out for a degustation with Luke and my parents. So <laughs> that may or may not have been the only time that I used it. It was just so special to me. I kept it stuffed in a dust bag the entire time and I just wasn't enjoying it. And I really felt like if I was going to keep that bag, I needed to be using it. And getting joy out of it and actually wearing it which yeah as I said I wasn't doing so I decided to sell that one I think if circumstances were different I had a very different life then I definitely would have held on to it but for that reason yeah it just it wasn't right for me and I think one of the things that just taking away from all of these handbags that I've sold is that really lifestyle plays a huge part into what handbags are going to work for me at least in my own personal experience so yeah i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video if you've sold any designer handbags i'd love to know what ones they are did you regret selling them or are you glad that you no longer have them in your collection and if there's a handbag that you are currently thinking of purchasing please let me know as well um, i'm currently tossing up with whether i save up for a chanel a fendi peekaboo or if I hang out and see if the Louis Vuitton twice bag that I wanted, which is no longer available in the color that I want, for some weird reason, comes back in stock. So, trying to figure out what I do. 
I don't know. I, there's a few bags on my wish list at the moment and I can't decide what to get. So love to know what bags you guys are looking at. And yeah, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you're new and you want to see more videos like this from me. And like I mentioned at the beginning of my video, if you have any wedding related questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them when I do the Q&A video soon. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon. See ya. Bye.